What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds where today I forgot my GoPro, so I'm recording with my iPhone. It sucks, but it is what it is. So, uh, we are going to be working on the Dodge Dart today, and although the, do the, 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 the Dodge Dart is almost totally buttoned up, um, there's some minor things that have got to be taken care of. There is a uh, coolant line that we got to pull off of the other engine. Um, I've already put the wheels on. We got to swap the back bumper because I am taking this thing down for a state inspection today. And we're gonna see if they approve this car to be rebuilt. So hopefully we can get a rebuilt title for this sucker today, get it on the road today, and put this thing back to work. And then once we get it inspected and everything, we can clean it up, and then we're ready to go. I'm excited because this will be my first car that has to go through a state inspection because it's so new. And uh, let's just jump into it, let's do it. So here's the old power plant, the old power training. See, I got the wheels off and I put the wheels on this car like they should be. There's a couple other things we're gonna do later. I'm not too worried about it right now, but the main thing is we gotta get this coolant line. We gotta break this here. We're gonna have to go get some clamps because these don't, they don't reuse well. So we're going to, uh, this metal piece is bent, I think. Actually, that metal piece looks good, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the old, that's what I'm thinking. I'm confused. We need to take this whole coolant line right here, which goes all the way over here and over to this thermostat, which should be real fun to get to uh, with the engine in the car on this one. But we got to get that. That's an absolute necessity. We can't do anything without it. I'm in the process of changing out the bumpers um, with the blue one. That's only to get it through the inspection, all right? This back bumper will not pass inspection because it's smashed, it's ripped apart. Um, so we're gonna put the blue one on it temporarily, and I've already got a line on a black bumper, the same color, in excellent condition, for 300 bucks locally. So we're just gonna go put a whole bumper on it and call it a day, but we're gonna do that later. Today it's just gonna have a blue bumper on it. We gotta put some coolant in it. I did a lot of checking around and made sure that this Prestone um, with Core Guard is compatible with the Fiat slash Mopar slash Dodge, whatever fluid that's in this, absolutely compatible. And uh, that's that's pretty much it. Then we actually get to take it out and drive it and see if it'll pass inspection. All right, so we're, so we're gonna take this tail light out here and once you pull this cover off, there's just two eight millimeter bolts, one there and one here. And it looks like the tail light should, oh, well, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, then all that's left is the uh, the wiring here. You can see all the damage back here. This is no good. But uh, just take off the wiring for the uh, light bulb right here. Looks like that bulb was burned out anyway. Pop this sucker out. And then it's literally out with the old. And in with the new. Now what I found on this, which I wasn't expecting, is that the crash bar is actually damaged back here. You can see it's damaged right here. I'm not gonna reuse this. I'm gonna go over to the blue car. See how it's tweaked? This is no good. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it this way. So we're going to take the crash bar off of the other car and bring it over here and put it on this one. And uh, then we should be good to go. All right, boys. We got her done, got her did. I'm not recording the whole process for you. We're just gonna kinda go through this as I go. This was a pain because I couldn't find a remote trunk release uh, and there's no cable. So obviously there's no remote trunk release and with the engine and everything taken out, I couldn't get it to uh, pop the trunk. So I had to come in here and unbolt the trunk release from the trunk lid, which means I had to climb through the back seat there. It was a pain, but uh, we got the crash bar off. We got the bumper off. I got some tail lights sitting in there. Uh, we won a car. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You gotta wait for the big reveal but there's two cars I'm bidding on. I just won one of them for 550 bucks, man. 550, but the sad thing is I bought it sight unseen. So, so get ready for that. You know how I do with the sight unseen things. We noticed that uh, this tailpipe here was a little bit crooked. So I took this big, this big pipe right here and I pulled it back this way. And I think it's pretty much straight. It may be hanging down a little bit. I may have to bend that up a little bit, but it looks like for the most part, it's straightened out. I see we got a little bit of damage down here. I'm gonna straighten this out with probably just some channel locks or something, straighten it out, and that should be fine. There's no damage to the actual pan or underneath the trunk or anything. The trunk pan is fine. It's just just this little bit of metal right here. So we're gonna straighten that out. We're gonna get this stuff put back together, and uh, she should be about ready for an inspection. All right, guys, gals, there she is. She's running. 
We've got the AC recharged. All the fault codes are cleared except for the power steering. And the reason is I, I, I used a couple different uh, diagnostic tools on this thing trying to figure out and uh, it is VIN matched to the car. So the fact is we will have to take it to the dealer to get that, uh, to get that new steering rack programmed to this car. But otherwise, everything seems to be going very well. It's running with the air conditioning on. No check engine lights, there's no faults at all. Everything is working. Everything is working. It's just, it's amazing to see it together. We do have a tire pressure sensor that's bad. That's no big deal. When you consider the amount of work that went into this car, uh, that's nothing. But we got nice cold air, man. I mean, whoo. Cold air conditioning. As you can see, we just, the only lights on this thing, temperature is up to normal operating temperature. We got a, a tire pressure light and then we got the, uh, the steering rack, which the steering rack, rack works. So it's not like it shuts it down or anything. It just, it gives you a code um, and, and leaves that thing illuminated. It doesn't cause any problems. We will take it to the dealer. We will get that reprogrammed. We will fix the tire pressure monitor. We will keep our eye on the gauges. And it looks like... Uh, oh, she runs so good, guys. It runs so freaking good. <laughs> We're going to take her on a first drive today. We're going to see if we can get this thing inspected, get it to pass the state inspection, put tags on it, rebuild the title. Let's do it. And it's been a while since I've given a shout out to jump and carry for chlor automotive for sending me this jnc 1224 listen to me guys this thing's a little on the pricey side but if you're commercially doing cars you won't regret this person this purchase so big shout out to jump and carry i'll have a link to this in the description uh, so you can purchase one from amazon man this thing is a beast there is no car that it has not been able to start this thing will jump start tractors, diesels, semis. It doesn't matter, man. You hook this thing up to a 12 or 24 volt. This thing is insane. So big shout out to Chlor Automotive. Thank you for the jump and carry 1224. Check them out on Amazon. This is the very first drive from the uh, 2013 Dodge Dart SXT. Maiden voyage since the powertrain swap. Everything looks good. I've let it set and run, let the cooling system bleed. I've checked double and triple checked wires and hoses. And it appears to me that this thing is ready to go. So I'm nervous. Let's go. There she takes off. There we go. <laughs> it's 40 miles an hour. Seemed to hesitate a little bit there for a minute. We haven't even done an alignment yet. You know what I mean? Like, the fact that it doesn't even have an alignment and we're cruising, like, it's nothing. This car rides so good. Obviously, I will take it in and get the alignment done. It's going to desperately need an alignment after this. You see, the steering wheel sits a little bit to the left. I think, uh, I think an alignment will cure that. 45 miles an hour. Smooth as butter. Look at the, back, look at the red Corvette back there. You see that red Corvette? Sexy, sexy car. All right, I guess now the only question is, will the state rebuild this car? Will the state approve the work we did? Let's get it to the house. Let's go find out. Ooh, CLS 550. You just got passed by a Dodge Dart, homie. All right, so I noticed the check engine light popped on. I don't know if you can see it, but there she is. Check engine light is on. And it seems like it's uh, it, it's no transmission issue or anything, but it seems like it's a throttle issue, like maybe a throttle position sensor. Uh, it seems like it doesn't quite rev up exactly when it's supposed to. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're doing 53 miles an hour. She's doing fine. It's just a little bit sporadic. Now, with that said, it's also possible because this car has sat for two over two years at Copart, plus the time it's been sitting at the shop. There is a possibility it's got bad gas, and bad gas 
uh, will definitely cause it to not run properly. It won't ignite at the appropriate time and that could be causing the issue as well. So when we get back, we're gonna have to run a diagnostic, find out what the check engine light is on for, and if it's just a sensor, we can rob it off the other engine and put it on this one, and we should be good to go. But so far, everything is still going very well. The car is still running and driving just fine. All right, so I made it to the house, and it's doing pretty well considering. I mean, there's gonna be a couple little things we're gonna have to keep an eye on, but uh, right now that engine code is for nothing other than an active uh, grill. Um, apparently, there are little butterflies that are supposed to be down here in the bottom part of this grill, and I can, oh, there's a tool. There's one of my tools down there. <laughs> yeah, so the active grill on this is broken, so we're gonna have to replace it. Everything seems to be doing fine. It's, it's running great, it's not heating up. Looks like we need to check our coolant level. It's a little bit low, but the thing is driving very well for a flood car that's been sitting for over two years at Copart. I think we just need to uh, run the fuel out of it. We're gonna clean all this off, get all this off, and then we're gonna take it for that inspection. Well, I wish we could have washed it first. What do you think? All right, guys, here we are. Tag agency. Time to get that, uh, time to get that inspection and see if they say we're good to go or if they tell us we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Let's get it done. All right, so we just got done with our inspection. And moment of truth, looky here, 08 of 19. That's right, we got brand new tags, brand new registration, rebuilt title is in the mail on the way. She passed. So now all we gotta do is uh, top up the coolant reservoir get that black bumper installed, get this thing cleaned up. In fact, let's go take it for a wash and see what it looks like with just a quick car wash. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Are you happy? Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> All right. Here we go, boys and girls. First time on the highway. Real nice. We're going to take her down in a... We're gonna reward her for her good behavior with a car wash. Let's go, uh, let's go get it cleaned up. All right, here we go. The car is probably terrified because the last time it saw water like this, it died and had to have some pretty serious organ transplants. I'm curious to see what it comes out looking like though, for just a, just a $20 car wash. I'll be, <laughs> I don't expect it to come out looking all that great because this thing is covered in mud and dirt. But uh, I'll tell you what, man, I'm really starting to get attached to this car, but I'm not going to say I'm going to keep it because if I say I'm going to keep it, we all know how that works out. Uh, it's scheduled for a full interior detail and leather treatment tomorrow at Red Carpet. So uh, tomorrow should be interesting. See how the interior comes out because this thing looks pretty rough. Let's see what it looks like when we get out of this car wash. All right, boys and girls, here she is. Just a quick car wash, nothing too fancy. The car's got some dings and some other scrapes and things. It's never gonna come out looking perfect, unless we get it PDR'd and have it just completely repainted, but we'll get that back bumper put on it, make it look a hell of a lot better. She already looks a ton better than she did, doesn't she? How about that? I'm happy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be it for the video. But before we go, I wanna point out, we got a $10,000 car. All right, you look around and look at what dealers sell. We're going by what dealer sells, not, not private party, because this car is purchased through a dealership and it will be sold through the dealership. So you always gotta look at it from a dealer's perspective. And you can see similar cars with similar mileage are going Clean title, of course, for around $10,000. Now, I made a mistake earlier. I, I think I made a mistake earlier. I think I said we had 3,000, no, I said we had over $4,000 in the car. I was wrong. I thought we paid $2,500 for the car. Here, take a look at these pictures. We actually paid $1,535 for the blue dart and $1,535 for the black dart. We got them both for the same price. So total investment in two cars, all parts included, $3,070.
That's $3,070 total investment so far into a car that sells for around $10,000. You're talking 30% of the price of one of these with a clear title or 70% off a dealer's price. Now, yes, there was a lot of work that went into it. And no, it's not done yet. It obviously doesn't have the right color bumper. I think I'm, I'm really considering once we see how the Volkswagen turns out for Mako, maybe we'll send this down to Mako and have Mako do the paint job on it. Assuming the one for, on the Volkswagen comes out looking good, why not? We'll get it a fresh coat of paint. It'll be freshly waxed and polished, fresh interior detail, 40,000 or 48,000 mile powertrain. This thing will be solid. This is where Copart really, really shines, man. 70% off the price. If you're willing to put in a little bit of time, effort, love, and labor. Now, with that said, there's some things that still have to be done, and we'll have a final price and final add-up of all the, the investment at a later date. But, but you could, the point is, you could drive this car as it is right now with no issues. None. You could drive this car and have yourself a nice, newer, lower mileage car. It may not look the prettiest because it's got a, a blue bumper on it, but you could do it. It's 70% off the retail price of a car. Who's going to complain? Um, now, with a paint job, and there is a stupid check engine light for the uh, active air something. There's the grill. The, the grill on the front of the car has these flaps that open and close for aerodynamics. It helps to improve fuel economy. Those are broken, so it costs me, it costs me $300 for those. The check engine light will not go out without it. And because it's broken, I had to order them. I couldn't find any used at all anywhere. So it was 300 bucks for a set of those. I got a TPMS sensor, so that uh, air dam thing for the, the air deflector, 300 bucks. The TPMS sensor uh, will cost me $18.75 plus installation. It's got good tires on it, so we don't have to worry about that. A good detail, around 100 bucks. What else we got? Um, we're going to have to go to the dealer because of the... Uh, what is that thing called? The rack and pinion, since it's not, it's the, the error code that I got from my computer says uh, VIN mismatch. Yeah, it's programmed to the other cars. So we've got to go to the dealer and get that program. So there's some more money to put in this. We are going to be looking at putting a little more money into it, obviously, because I want the car to be right. And I know we don't have to do all this stuff. And I know that that's eating into my profits. And I know a lot of you are going to get really aggravated with me for making sure everything is right on the car. I can't help it, man. That's me. I'm willing to, to knock down some of my profits on this car to make sure that the new owner is getting the best I can give them. That means everything to me. So whenever this car is ready to go up for sale, it's probably going to be around $7,000. You know, that, that's what I'm hoping to get out of it, and I think it'll bring it. We'll see. Time will tell. Hopefully, we can get the paint job done. All the codes will be gone on the dash. We'll have a great solid car, but before I even think about selling it, I'm going to be daily driving this car to make sure everything is good on it. I won't sell a dud. I won't sell a crappy car to somebody. We're going to put a few miles on it and see how she does. Overall, guys, this was a hell of a deal. A hell of a deal. 70% off the purchase price of the same car if you bought it from a dealership. And the thing is, is even if you bought, even if you went out to a dealer and you paid the 10 grand for this car, right? It's gonna have imperfections. These cars are all gonna have imperfections. Scratches in the paint, dings. Guys, we can have a brand new paint job on this thing. We'll have a car that basically looks brand spanking new. That is something you're not gonna find at a dealer. So that's gonna be it for the video. Just a, hey, it's finally time that we made a great deal. This wasn't a good deal, this was a great deal on a car. A lot of people didn't like the Dart, but at the end of the day, the dart is an absolute win, man. So we're going to get out of here. Stay tuned. There's a lot more coming on the Dodge Dart. I hope you enjoyed it thus far. We're going to come back with a full detail and probably some other work that we're going to have to put in, into it. And we'll show you what those uh, air dam shutters look like. Those will be pretty cool. And uh, just stay safe out there, everybody. We'll catch you all very soon in the next one.